Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Empowerment with Elizabeth. Today I am here with my sweet new friend, Julia. She's going to chat with us about her passion for advocacy and food security awareness. So Julia, tell us a little bit about you. So as mentioned, I am Julia Stanek. I am a local title holder in the Miss America organization in South Dakota. I'm Miss Huron. Huron is actually home to the world's largest fake pheasant. So you can always keep an eye out on that. But other than making jokes about here on South Dakota, I am president of women's rugby here at the University of South Dakota, where I also am a double major of criminal justice and political science. And my community service initiative, which is actually very, very similar to yours, is fueling South Dakota, eliminating hunger, tackling hunger one plate at a time. I love it. I love it. So talk to us about why you decided on your CSI, you know, what kind of brought you to the topic of hunger and making that something that you're kind of championing? So my first community service initiative was fueling South Dakota, eradicating eating disorders because I had suffered through two of them during my time in high school. And it was actually after a paper that I had started writing for one of my criminal justice classes that I was like, wow, food insecurity is tackling a lot of Americans and even more so South Dakotans. 31 out of 66 counties are considered food insecure that have food deserts in them. And I was like, wow, that statistic is jarring. Why did I never learn about that? And I realized that hunger is the root of so many issues. So I kind of switched my CSI around. I was like, I still really want to be able to talk about the mental health aspect side of it. So flipped it around, fueling South Dakota, eliminating hunger is how I was able to get here using my slogan, Fuel Your Body for Success. And I've loved campaigning for this over a year now, and I just really enjoyed it. I love it. I love it. You said you've been doing it for over a year. So talk to us about, you know, the daily work. Like, what does that look like? What does a day in the life of advocating for food security awareness look like for you? So on my professional side, I work at a law office right now, which is super fun and super exciting. But I also get to see how state health care and state programs impact food insecurity across our state. Are they working? Are they reaching the right people? Are they impacting who we need them to impact? So I get to advocate for those people, sometimes against the state, which can be very scary. But that's the beauty that I get to speak on that. Even further, I love hosting food drives. I've been able to start the ball rolling on getting a food drive in every town that in the South Dakota local is held. So that's been my big campaign for the year. And I just love spreading the awareness and the impacts that food insecurity can have on South Dakotans through what I eat in a day. I started a series where I like to do five for 15. So it's five meals for under $15. This is how you make it. I will eat those for my lunch. And it's an easy way to show that healthy food doesn't have to be expensive food. I love that. I love that, especially for, you know, our friends that are in SNAP and WIC and any other stuff mm-hmm. on Instagram. I think that that's such a, a niche market that doesn't really have a lot of um, traffic. And so it's super cool that you're doing something like that. I love that. Um, but give us kind of the rundown of hunger in South Dakota. You've mentioned it a little bit. You've given us some statistics, but what does that look like, you know, for South Dakota and dealing with food security? South Dakota has such an interesting dynamic when it comes to tackling food insecurity. We are a Republican-led state in our Congress, our governor, that there are a lot of programs that have been cut recently, such as the Summer Backpack Program. The Summer Backpack Program got food into adolescents' lives. I used to say that one in nine children in South Dakota suffer from food insecurity, but unfortunately, after this backpack program was removed, the number went to one in six children in South Dakota suffer from food insecurity. So being able to advocate for that in South Dakota, showing that these programs not only work, they're beneficial, here are the direct consequences when we don't support programs like the backpack program or supporting a infrastructure increase of food banks and where we can get them in rural parts of South Dakota, particularly on reservations. I love that. I love that. Um, You know, and I'm interested to hear your thoughts on where you think, you know, the food security trends are going. So, you know, there's been a lot of talk about like broadband access and you mentioned food deserts, which has been a buzzword for a couple of years now. So um, what topic do you think that people need to stay up to date on when it comes to food insecurity? 
we really need to focus on what food deserts are. I love talking about food deserts. I wrote a paper and dissertation on it. I love getting to talk about it. But most importantly, what is a food desert? What qualifies as a food desert? And how do food deserts impact the people around us? Every Native American reservation in South Dakota, there's nine of them, they're all food deserts. They do not have access to healthy, adequate, fresh produce and meals at an affordable cost. And that right there should be jarring and it should be scary because South Dakota is home to the poorest county in America. And that's a direct impact from the overall cost of produce and the cost of living on these reservations that when we tackle food insecurity, we can start tackling those numbers of poverty rates. We can tackle those numbers of people who don't have access to health care with preventative health care. Love talking about that too, how few food is able to fuel our bodies for health care and overall life expand expectancy. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and I, I always like to ask the other girls who, you know, have the CSI or, you know, are doing, um, you know, work with hunger, because I think it's so interesting to hear what their suggestions are. So I want to know, um, you know, if you were to meet somebody on the street and say, hey, you should start helping out with food insecurity, they're interested. What was the what's the first thing that you would tell them to either start volunteering at or um, reading if there's like a newsletter or just kind of like what's that advice that you would give to somebody that you're meeting and um, explaining food insecurity to for the first time? My first approach, I always say, is get educated. After you get educated, reading basic definitions, what is food insecurity? What is hunger? What is food deserts? Particularly in South Dakota, there are three ways to help. You can donate your time to local food pantries, local organizations that focus on food insecurity. You can also donate those non-perishables or even fresh produce. There are lots of community gardens in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where I'm originally from, where you can donate fresh produce and they will take that fresh produce and bring it to the banquet. The banquet is a nonprofit that serves meals, lunch and dinner, every workday week of fresh produce, healthy meals, and whoever needs it just comes in. There's no pre-requirements to go there. And then finally, you can donate your money to organizations that help fight against food insecurity. I love it. I love it. And I'm interested to hear, you know, you mentioned your dissertation and all of this amazing, all of these amazing things that you're doing. So um, just kind of fill us in on this next year. You know, what are you going to be focusing on with your CSI um, during your reign and over the course of this next year in school year? So I have a couple of big plans I'm really excited for. First, the one I mentioned earlier is hosting a food drive at every South Dakota local town. I want to be able to go to every South Dakota local. I'm very excited that that's right around the corner. We've already had one. So I'm ready for the next ones this year. I'm so excited to meet all the new girls. But also, I want to show the impact that Miss South Dakota has on the communities, even after Miss South Dakota leaves, the impact of the organization are life changing. We're able to spark those changes by telling them, hey, you're able to donate food here in your community, in your VFW, in your churches, even in your schools. Now go beyond this wall and show how this community can come together to remove food insecurity. And that's the most beautiful thing. So I love getting to kind of work on that, start planning those, but I am in my senior year of college. So there is that. I will graduate this year. It's been a fun one to say the least, but I'm very excited to take my education and go to law school and really focus on human rights, access to food, access to clean water, access to these government programs that we are funding through our tax paying dollars and really show how we can eradicate hunger in America. Amazing. Amazing. Well, you're doing so much good work and um, it's been so much fun to listen to you chat about something that I'm passionate about too. And you obviously are as well. So thank you so much, Julia, for coming on and chatting with us about you and everything you've been doing. And um, just know that we'll be rooting you on. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for having me come on. I've been looking forward to this all week. I was so excited. Of course, of course. And I will see the rest of you guys on our next episode. Bye y'all.